So put in the chat for me what you already know. Like somebody said she can do, Maria said she can do a landing page. Great. Okay. So what's something that you can do or that you know about KV Core and online lead generation? Anybody? Do you know anything, one thing, two things, anything about KV Core and online lead generation? Um, Linda said with the previous training, she did set up her website. That's good. And Rita says, um, knows how to put the people in KV Core um, and post on Craigslist. That's great. Um, Risa says she can do campaigns and create more drive to landing pages. Oh, okay. Rita set up her profile. See, you guys are doing so good. <clears throat> this is interesting that um, when you guys put in a message, it's not turning orange and alerting me. It's kind of different. Let's see. Let's see what she's saying here. Oh, there, now it's turning orange. Um, Debbie says, I have a website that I set up for you and just exported your database to KV Core. That's good. Or imported it, rather. All right. Good. Okay. And then the big question is, oh, and Liz said um, she wants to refresh her knowledge and get past the recent training. Okay. So, so what I want to know now is what, what made you come on tonight and spend your time here tonight, what made you come on? What is it that you want, one thing that you really want to know how to do at the end of the night, in the next two hours? What's one thing you wanna see if you can get? Anybody? What's one thing that you wanna know? Linda says she wants the refresher. Debbie wants to know more about campaigns. Um, using it for emailing. All right, drip campaigns. Okay. Good. I like it. What else? More emailing. Okay, using it more efficient, efficiently to gain leads and generate more business. Okay. All right. Good. Um, setting up campaigns, not the pre-designed ones. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, um, we're going to go, I'm going to cover so much tonight. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do it, <laughs> but here we go. Um, yeah. And Marissa's like, just, I just want to know how to use it. How do I use this thing? Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here's what it is. Here's KV Core sometimes is still like, what is it? What really is it? It's your KV Core is your consumer facing IDX website. This is where it syncs with your MLS and all the listings from your MLS get sent to your KV Core website. And on the back end, you as a user, you can search for listings and you can create lead generating links that relate to these listings. And then on the front end, the consumer can see all the listings and search the listings on your website. So that's the first thing. It, it does have drip campaigns and a drip campaign, campaign platform. You can send custom campaigns, you can use the default campaigns. It has a lead generating platform. Um, one thing I didn't say in here that it has is, is um, automatic um, contact as well, like a lot of automation that KB Core is doing, kind of done for you beyond the campaign that you don't even think about. The lead generating links, you're gonna, you can create the landing pages, the squeeze pages, the um, call capture codes to and use those uh, leverage those, put them out there so that you can drive traffic to your website. And then it is a CRM. So you can manage all your database there. Okay, so that's what it is. So here's a statistic, and this is my statistic. And some of you have heard it from me before. 
but it's my statistic based on what I have done and what I know using KV Core. And that is as far as seller leads are concerned, um, you, any seller leads that you generate, and I'm talking just even just an address, whether it's just an address or you also get an email address or you also get a phone number, 18% of the seller leads you get will list and sell their home within six months. Okay, they just will, 18% of them. So you have to figure out how you're gonna get those people. If you don't already have it, um, this is my um, KV Core Setup Template link. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, this, this template keeps evolving and changing and I'm trying to keep it updated and trying to make it more clear as time goes on. Um, but if you use this link, you'll always be able to at least get to the freshest document, um, the, the, the most recent document. So uh, it's bit.ly forward slash KV course setup three. Okay. And it is my lead generating slash KV course setup training template. So Quickly, I'm just going to point a couple of things out. Um, this template you can just look at, but if you wanted to type in and add in your own things or create notes, those kinds of things, which this template does call for, you'd want to make a copy of it because right now you don't have editing rights and I'm not going to give you editing rights. You can see right now, those of you who opened it up and look, looking at it, you're in here and there's probably other people too because there's 12 viewers and there's only eight of us on here. So people are always looking at this thing. You've got um, this video here, you click on this link and you'll notice anytime you click on a link, this little other link kind of hovers over it and that's what you gotta click on to get to the resource that I'm pointing it to. So this is a video about how to use the template. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining it. Now at the time, this template looked a little bit different, but it's, you'll still get it. Okay, this is a little video about how to make a copy of this video for yourself so that you can edit and do things in it. All right, um, these links here link to all the different tabs that I have in this template. And I call it a template, meaning, you know, it's, it's really a checklist for you. It's something for you to follow to make sure you can get set up and, and create lead generating links. But over time, I've done a lot more setting this up as a training template. So for example, if you click here on the domain and agent profile, I've got directions for you, tell you what to do um, and how to do it and how to use this template as a reference guide for you so that you can take this information that you're learning here from these videos and directions and then go to your KB Core website and do the thing, set it up. Okay, so I've got different steps. So this, this is going to link to a video that's like 10 minutes long that explains everything that you need to know. Much of it we're going to go over tonight in an in abbreviated, you know, compact time, but I just have so much more information here. So I've got your training template for domain and agent profile set up for SEO, which stands for search engine optimization and creating custom pages. Um, I also have a campaign training page. Everything you need to know about campaigns and creating custom campaigns, it's all here. Um, lead generating training, everything you need to know to get you going to create your own lead generating links and start posting them. Um, lead gen tools, this first uh, section, these first 12 are just examples of other types of lead pages that I've done. Um, for single property, multi-property, seller suite. So you can just, you know, look at these examples and then just delete all this and put your own stuff, okay? Um, so that's, that's where editing this template comes in. You want to have your own copy. Because when you create these links, and I've had this question, and people tell me, they say, I created a bunch of squeeze page links. Where are those links? Like, are they in the system? Nope. They just disappear as if they never existed, <laughs> okay? So when you create squeeze page links, you have to save them if you wanna reuse them, 
So for example, I have this link. It's adult 55 condos in, uh, in two different counties that I work. Um, and I can use this link over and over again, the squeeze page. Really what it is, the squeeze page is basically like a filter. It creates a search filter on your website. So that filter is always going to work. And it's always just going to update with the newest information. Um, right now, there's only six, but that's better. Last week, there were only five. So it got one more new listing. So that's good. Um, so, so anyway, so this is adult 55 condos in my area. Um, not many, but, but some. Um, some of you who live in more like warmer climates probably have a lot more. Um, I'm in Michigan, so, you know. But this squeeze page, um, the reason that you create a, a, a squeeze page is because when you create the squeeze page and you post it out there on the interwebs somewhere, and we're going to talk about that, you've set up the squeeze page in such a way to operate to do specific things, like perhaps trigger a specific campaign or add a specific hashtag to that lead that comes in, okay? So if somebody just came to your website to look this stuff up, like they just looked at the property, they would just be automatically called, you know, a new lead for a buyer. They would get the default buyer campaign and that's well and good, but there'd be no really way to categorize them or, or trigger a specific campaign because you didn't have one set up. So this is the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. So anyway, back to the template. You know, you're going to create your own squeeze pages and you're going to put them in, you know, somewhere. If you don't want to use this template, put them somewhere. Um, and what this part is, is just like, when did I create the link? What type of squeeze page is it? What is the link? What is it? Is it a list of open houses? Is it a specific listing? What is it? Where am I going to post this link? What's the source that I'm going to use? Is it going to be Facebook? Is it me Google? Do I just want to make it general? Like, can I just post it anywhere? Um, what hashtag am I going to assign it? And we're going to talk more about hashtags and what they do and how they're used in KB Core. Um, but what hashtag? And if in this, in, for this example, is this a hashtag that is going to just identify with, or help me categorize this lead, or is it going to trigger a specific custom campaign? Where am I going to post the link? And what is the link? So. So, so that's just a description of what it, what it is. Now you got to take that link and you got to put it somewhere, whether it's your Facebook business page, on a blog post, in a weekly email, um, you know, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, somewhere <laughs> online that you can start, you know, generating leads, drive people to your website. I also finally have a social media training page now. And that's newer. Um, so these are the four um, social media channels I believe you have to have. Um, a Facebook business page, a Google My Business page, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And each of these trainings will tell you what to do and what to do with those channels as well. Okay, and then there's more social media related lead generating trainings in this template. So that's what the template is. It's, it's a reference guide for you. It's a training guide and you can also save your own stuff that, that you've, uh, from your own um, website setup. Okay. Um, great. Yes. I, and I'm, I'm really trying to, um, make the template better and better. I'm, I'm getting, I'm coming up with some more ideas. I just haven't had time to do anything, but it, so it is what it is for now. <laughs> so, so anyway, I hope it helps you. So let's move on. Well, that's enough about the template. All right. The other thing that I want to talk about, and I've done this, you know, this is, this is something I've been talking about a lot late, lately. And I just want to ask if you're forgetting about your sphere. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, gosh, I need leads. I need leads. And I just wonder, you know, with the sphere that you have, with the past clients you have, you know, how good of a job are you doing with taking care of them? How good of a job are you doing with calling them and asking them if they need anything or see how they're doing or whatever to take care of those people? Like if you get new leads, are you just going to like treat them like a transaction and then move on and then leave them behind? Um, are you going to take care of them? So 
I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how to take care of your sphere using KV Core. And just to remind you that um, those people that remember who you are and know who you are and that you keep in contact with, those are where 51% of the business is coming from, is from those people, referrals from those people. So that's, I just want to mention that as we're talking about generating online leads. All right, ready? All right, I'm gonna take a little, I, I, got, I have poured myself a little tiny, tiny little sip. I know this is a huge glass, I didn't have any more wine glasses, but I swear it's only this full. I have a little red wine, <laughs> okay? Just a little bit, okay, I'm gonna take a sip of it. All right, your first assignment is to Google yourself because having an online presence a strong online presence is gonna be so important if you want to generate leads. So just to show you, I'm going to Google now and I'm just gonna type in my name. I'm not even gonna type in Realtor. I'm not gonna type in Grand Rapids. I'm not gonna type in EXP Realty. I'm just gonna type my name. When I type my name in Google, look what happens. I'm everywhere. I dominate as a Realtor. First, my first Facebook business page comes up. Okay, then I, ha I do have a WordPress site, um, but I also have my KV Core. My Zillow profile comes up. My LinkedIn profile comes up. I do have Twitter. I don't use it enough. I need to. Um, this is my KV Core website popped up. Um, I do a lot of events locally, so my Eventbrite popped up. Um, I have a Yelp and also a lineable, which I never use, but it's there. So, but anyways, it's me as a realtor completely dominates this page. And then on the right hand side, the, the way that I get this little guy to pop up, this beautiful little thing, that's my Google My Business page. That's free. You have to have a Google My Business page. Notice that like it shows like the whole area I serve and you know, I've got my website. I can ask for reviews here. People can schedule calls with me here. Um, my address is there, whatever. So you gotta have that. And you can also post things to Google your business for free. So you're just generating more content online so people can find you and find stuff that's related to what you're posting. You know, so it used to be, if you guys remember, that we used to have Google Plus, that's not a thing anymore. So as far as posting on Google, the way you do it is from your Google My Business page. And again, that's free. Um, Okay, so Google yourself and, and have a strong um, presence. These are, the ch um, these are the channels that you have to have. You have to have a Facebook business page if you want to generate leads online. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, for free, okay? I mean, you can pay for online leads all day, but if you want to generate online leads for free, this is, this is what, what I'm telling you you got to do. Got to have a Facebook business page and you got to post stuff to it. Got to post content there and you have to build followers. It's going to take a little time. You know, I don't have a ton. I, I have less than 500, but it took a while to get there. Um, <clears throat> a Google My Business page, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Those are the four that you have to have. And again, if you go to my social media training and the template I just showed you, these four trainings are there, okay? I just wrote as a bonus here, this is super important too. We all have a realtor.com profile. Why do we all have a realtor.com profile? Because it's associated with NAR. It's associated with NAR, so your profile's there. It's already there. It might just say your name and what brokerage you're with, but with no other information. You might not have a photo, you, there's no phone number, there's no you know, bio about you, no, no links to your website, because you gotta go claim that profile, okay? That's huge. Zillow, you don't have to pay, you don't have to be a premier agent to um, have a Zillow profile, but go get your Zillow profile, create it, put all, you know, your website, claim all your sales that you've had over the last, you know, several years, <laughs> you get, can find them, claim them, put it all in there. Um, you know, ask for reviews there, have a Zillow profile. Um, and then Nextdoor. Nextdoor, 
Um, you don't have to pay, uh, and you don't have to be a sponsor to have a business page in Nextdoor, but you'll wanna have your personal neighbor profile and also create a business profile um, and maybe just not pay as, to be a sponsor. You can pay to be a sponsor, but you don't have to. Um, but I would definitely recommend all of that. Today I actually got a message from somebody in Nextdoor I need to respond to asking about my, um, my, buy, my seller guide. Oh boy, okay, <laughs> so I gotta deal with that. I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta send her a new, something new. All right, so anyway, that's that. Okay, um, two, check your website functionality. And we're gonna actually go over some of this now. Smart number, agent profile, website settings, behavior alerts, and automatic call creation. Let's do this. I'm gonna just go to my KB Core. Move it over like so. All right. So let's talk about the smart number first. So the smart number is assigned to you when you opt in for your website, you get a smart number. The smart number, it's gonna be listed here in the drop down. It's gonna be something that's assigned to you. Um, but it's also going to be assigned to your area, other agents. It's a round robin number. If somebody calls this number, it's going to round robin to the next agent. Um, some things to note, and this is like a tough, tough swallow. <laughs> some things to note is whenever any of the campaigns send out a text message, it comes from the smart number. Whenever KB Core automatically sends other text messages through its behavior automation, it comes from the smart number. 99% of the time, if people reply to that, they're just gonna reply to the text message and it's gonna come right back to you. But if instead, if they decide to call that number, it might not come directly to you. And I know, because it's happened to me. Um, so, and I will tell you, I don't, I am not paying for my own personal smart number. You can go to Marketplace here, and I, I'm probably gotta do it. I'm gonna do it, fine, I'll do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but um, you go to Marketplace here, and you, you get your sm own smart number, personal smart number. It's, and you, it can be in your zip code, so like this one is not even my zip code. Um, and, um, but you gotta pay $27 extra a month, and, um, Another thing that I just learned that I didn't know is your smart number, you can't um, use your own cell phone number to be your smart number, but you can have it so that your Google voice number is your smart number. So if you have a Google voice number, it can be your smart number. And you still have to, the problem is you still have to pay $27 a month for it if you're gonna use it for KV Core as a smart number. And it costs, I think like 100 bucks or $99 to, to set that up. Otherwise, it's gonna be just a smart number, your own personal smart number that they give you, okay? Um, I have lived this long without paying for my own personal smart number, but it's starting to get a little nerve wracking because a couple things have happened where I'm like, oh gosh, okay. Anyway, that's that. Now, bes beside your smart number, um, besides the text, text messages, um, you can also, um, set up call capture codes. And I used to do, do that with my shared smart number, you know, call capture codes, you know, in other words, text one, two, three to get all the photos and details on this listing or text sell now to get your instant home value. And then it'll send them a link um, to get their instant home value. So those are different call capture codes that you can create. And we'll, we'll go over that. All right, so smart number, I talked about that. Your agent profile. Here's your agent profile. I'm gonna go, it's under here, here's your username. It's gonna be your email address. And under the drop down menu, you'll see your, your profile. So again, it's right here in this drop down, my profile. Then it always takes a bit for it to load. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure of, you can click edit here. 
And what you want to make sure is that you have your MLS ID. Everybody's MLS ID, depending on the MLS you're in, is going to look a little different and be weird. And everybody's got, every MLS is weird and different, I've learned. But, but this is what mine looks like. And this is basically par my, partial, my partial login um, user ID to my um, MLS. If you don't know what your MLS ID is, then you're going to go to your um, MLS tech who's at the board, <laughs> you know, who's at your board and say, hey, I need my MLS ID, the same ID that's going to link um, my listings to my IDX website and then we'll know what you mean. So, so that's important to have in there because if you don't have it in there, um, even though the website, your KB Core website is hooked up to your MLS and your listings will show up in there, but if you don't have your MLS ID in here, KB Core won't know which listings are your listings. So in the different search filters, where if you go here in the back end and search listings and you search for your listings, or in the front facing website when it shows my listings, um, it won't show your listings because um, you don't, you're, not, you're not hooked up. <laughs> okay, so you have to have that right. So that's one thing. Um, it doesn't look like it, but when you paste your um, Facebook links or your social media links in here, <clears throat> you have to paste the entire URL, starting with HTTP, you know, forward slash, blah, blah, blah. The entire correct link has to go in here, and then you save it. After you save it, then it's going to just show the ID. But if you just put, like, the user ID in there or, you know, the username in there, um, it's not going to show up correctly. You have to put the entire URL in there and then save it. Um, here, you just want to choose one. Choose what phone number you want to show on the site. Just choose one. <clears throat> okay, because only one's going to show anyway. And then if you check, out, check them all, they're gonna, it's going to get confused. Now, if you have your own personal smart number, and you're paying for that, it, that personal smart number will override anything that's on here and your own personal smart number will show as the main number on your website. Um, this part, Sylvia, you know where it says my email address? If you wanna put an email from, like if you're branding yourself as something else, I could put this, Sylvia at shesellsgr.com. Um, um, so when my, the, my emails come go to people, um, it will show that it's coming from this email address because I do brand myself that way, okay? Um, I could also, this is my website, but I could also put my, I have my WordPress website here. Um, I'll go ahead and do that. Now, it took me a super long time to add a lender to my KB Core for a long time. I was like, eh, no, I don't need to do that. I'm not doing that. But I started doing some different lead generating things that got me a lot more buyer leads and the kind of buyer leads where they just really needed help with like credit and, you know, people not sure buy or not. And I'm like, wow, I need somebody to help me handle all these leads. And so I talked to a lender, a young guy who's hungry and organized. He's organized. He's super organized and he's hungry and he's just on top of things. And so um, I asked him if he wanted to do it. And he's awesome. So now I put him in here as my main lender. And um, uh, so anytime I get a buyer lead that has a phone number, he calls them, he sets appointments with them and he does it like as soon as the lead comes in. And so he knows it's my lead. He makes sure it stays with me. I mean, it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay. So I recommend it, but you can have, and I'm going to go over how to add a lender later. Make sure you have a bio in here, you guys. A lot of times people will not put a bio in there and it's weird. You want to have some sort of bio. It doesn't have to be long. And in my template, I actually have a little article about how to rate a good bio. Um, and then have your signature. Definitely have a signature in there because this signature is going to go out with every automatic email. Okay, you definitely want to have a signature. All right, and that's all you really need. Okay, all right, I'm going to save that. The other thing I want to talk to you about the agent profile, talk about the smart number. Um, I wanted to talk about um, ca automatic call creation. So I'm going to go here. I'm still in the agent profile, and I'm going to go to settings. 
here. This is cool. And it took me a long time to really understand what was going on here too. <laughs> but what this is, is KB Core will automatically create call tasks for you. And it will, you know, give you a task and it will come up in your KB Core task to call this next person. And what you can do, and I always say make the contacts private and high from team, even though I'm not in the team and nobody can see these, but whatever, those are selected. And then you can choose the statuses of lead types, basically, all the lead types that you want KB Core to create call tasks for you. Um, I chose, I wanted them all. I wanted my sphere, prospects, new leads, active leads, clients, contracts, and closed clients. So you just click on here to see all the options. Okay. The only one I don't have on there is archived. Like I don't want it to, you know, make calls for me for our people I've archived. Um, and so, so, and it's going to auto create calls for me each day. I don't have it create calls for me on weekends, although I could select that toggle and turn it blue and then, and it would turn on. You can choose how many calls you want it to create for you. It's going to default at 10, but you can change this to five or 15 or 20 or a hundred. I don't care. You choose how many calls you want KB Core to create for you based on um, these statuses. And then um, you can choose what time do you want KB Core to send you an email with a list of all the people that you're going to call because it's going to email you a list. All right. Down here is do you also want um, um, these holidays? Do you want to like be considered working, you know, on holidays? And so these are the days that I want to be considered working. Okay. And. Um, save changes. So that's something to note about your agent profile. Somebody's sending me a question. I'm going to get there to the dialer, Linda. Yes. All right. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is behavior alerts. So I'm going to go here to lead engine. Oh, no, that was not correct. I'm sorry. Marketing autopilot. I always do that. Marketing autopilot, we're going to talk about behavior alerts and the marketing autopilot. I'm going to go here to behavioral automation. I want to explain to you what the heck is going on here. So, as you might know, KB Core does stuff behind your back and you don't even know it's doing it. But that's a beautiful thing about KB Core. These are the things that help you convert and you don't even realize it. Um, so, some people, you know, don't like to be contacted. Some people do. I am, a, I am a consumer who wants to be followed up with personally. Like I say this, I'll, like my insurance guy is a really good insurance guy. But damn, he never contacts me. If I want to know anything, if I have a question about anything, anything at all, I have to be the one to contact him. But it would be kind of nice if just once in a while, like even once a quarter, I got a text message from him asking me if I needed anything or an email asking me, you know, if I t telling me something, he just doesn't, he doesn't. My health insurance lady does quite, you know, not too often, but pretty often. Um, and <clears throat> so, so anyway, I'm that kind of consumer. And so some people aren't, whatever. But, but most people I think are. And so um, this is behavior alert. So what happens is when your contacts, anybody who's in your KB Core system, if they're in your sphere, so if their lead status type is sphere, or they're in a new lead or prospect or active lead, if any of these four types of people, because the toggle's blue, that's how I know these is active, it's turned off for these people, okay? Um, if any of those people do anything on my website, KB Course does something in kind. So basically what happens is if they do something they and there's a phone number for them, KB Core will send them a text message, all right? Um, and, and if there's no phone number, they will send them an email instead. So here's how you know what's being sent. When the lead revisits after 14 days, so it's been 14 days since a lead revisited, what are they going to get? Well, they're going to get this text message and it's going to say, you know, hi, Joe, 
It looks like you're doing a few home searches. I'll research your property alerts and update you. Anything specific you are looking for? Um, hang on one second. Oh, somebody's messaging me and it's confusing me. Hang on. Hold, please. Somebody else didn't get this email and I just, it's weird. I'm sorry you didn't get it, Perry, but I'm going to send you this link and you can join in and it will be recorded and you can see the beginning period. All right. And hang on. Hold, oh, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, so it so anyway, this is the message they're going to get. And um, some people, I've heard some people say, "Well, gosh, I don't know if I'm going to research property alerts for them." Don't worry about it. KB Core is going to do it for you. KB Core is going to change the search alert um, based on what that person is looking at right now. It's going to like modify it, and so. All you have to worry about is whether or not this person is going to reply back with, yeah, this is something specific I'm looking for. I mean, the worst case scenario is they're going to reply back and say, yeah, I just talked to you yesterday, dummy. <laughs> Don't you remember? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just making sure I'm just really good at follow-up. <laughs> you know, Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so anyway, so if they don't get it, if there's no phone number, they're not going to get a text. Instead, they're going to get an email that says something similar but different. Okay. Um, and that's what that is. Now, if you turn this little toggle off, this is, this is referring to you getting an alert. So anytime somebody does something on my website and then I get an alert on my text message from KB Core, it says, <laughs> oh, I'm going to hope you don't have the coronavirus. That's a terrible joke, but I'm sorry. I hope nobody has it. <laughs> I hope no, nobody has it. Okay. Um, anyway, so you get a text message from conversion and it'll have either, either a message that somebody sent you, a text message or an email message, um, or it's going to say like this. It says, new behavior alert. Contact was texted from smart number because the lead viewed a property three times. And then what did I get? I got a reply from the from the lead that tells me what they're talking about, what they're thinking. Um, and then another one. Uh, so that's what it says. And then it'll also say something like, um, let's see. Here, this one says new behavior alert. Contact was not messaged. They put 10 properties in the last week, but they were not messaged. So that's the kind of alerts you'll get. So if you don't want to get those alerts, um, you can just turn this off, okay? So that's what that is. And then here at the top right-hand side, um, be, uh, where it says, when a new lead or a prospect responds, it moves to active. So when you get a, a new seller lead or a new buyer lead, their lead status is going to be called either new lead or prospect, depending on what KB Core decides they are. And when that happens, these people are going to get a certain campaign automatically assigned to them. And so for like a new buyer lead, for example, they're going to get the default buyer campaign and that's going to be sent to them. But if that person responds to an automatic text message from these behavior alerts, or if that person, um, if you call them and in the call log, you mark that you contacted them and talked to them or if um, they reply to an email that was sent. If those things happen, then KB Core is gonna say, oh, they're no longer a new leader prospect. This person's an active lead now. And if that happens, it's going to turn off that original campaign that was designed for a new lead buyer, for example. So if you don't want it to turn off, then turn this button off and make that not blue anymore, make it gray. 
So you, cause you might be the type of person like, well, I don't want the campaign to stop. I want the campaign to go keep going. And now if I decide they don't need to be on that campaign anymore, I will take it off manually. That's up to you. All right. And, and then finally, I want to just touch on website settings. So I've got lots of videos um, and in the template, I talk about website settings, but briefly, I do want to talk about it because it does cause issues. Um, so I'm going to go to the Web IDX link here on the left hand side and go to edit settings. And I just want to show you really briefly what I've got going on here. Okay. And then you can, you can go back to lot, lots of website setting videos. So what I've got going on here, first of all, is um, I've uploaded my own background photos because I didn't like the photos that KB Core had. So I uploaded my own. These are all from my list, my own listings. And the boxes that are checked are the ones that are going to show on my website and they alternate. I'll show you what my website looks like. It's nothing like spectacular. It's just a normal KB Core website. It's not like I do this amazing customization or anything. It's just, you know, a KB Core website. It's fine. Looks good. I like it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, you know, I've got these different backgrounds. Um, and again, these are just from my listings, um, photos from my listings that I liked. All right. I only have three of them in there. I should update them. But, that, you know, you can change the accent color, that kind of thing. Notice I've got my, my title here. This is my website title. Um, I also have my um, Facebook business page um, chat messenger here linked right to my website. Um, my my KB Core template tells you how to do this yourself. So your own business page, Facebook business page chat can also be on here. Um, all right, what else do I wanna show you? I do have a secondary logo. Um, and then you just have to go through your website and make sure something is selected or not. Sometimes when you get your website, some things will be blank, like nothing will be selected. And you wanna choose something so that your website knows what to do and functions properly. So I just have no, don't hide the resources page. No, don't hide the millions map. Hide WCAG, I have no idea what that means because that's new and I don't know what that is. Hide office information. No, that means like hide my um, my broker's address and I can't do that in Michigan. So no, hide the print flyer button. This is like in the listing section. Um, another agent could print a flyer for your listing for like an open house or something. Um, and if you don't want that to show uh, for your listings, that's what that's about. Unlimited or use use limited listing labels. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> so I was gonna say no, because apparently I don't have limited listings. I don't know. Um, this is mandate phone. I see that some people have this and don't realize it's selected. If you select no and say this means when you get a lead um, or somebody's gonna register on your website, if you mandate the phone, that means you're forcing them to provide their phone number. I know some people just don't want to provide their phone number. And so that could make them, you know, that's just like another step you're asking them to do. And they might, you might not get the lead at all. So I just want you to know that. But if, if you, that's important to you, go ahead and mark yes. And anytime you do in here, you know, make sure, anytime you change anything, you have to click save. Because if you don't click save, it's not going to save. So for each and every single thing you change for each section, you got to save. Um, this is deciding like, you know, do you want to force lead registration or not? I have mine at normal. You know, you can choose unenforced, like don't force any lead registration. And I'm just like, what? What's the point then? Like, what? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Let them look at, I mean, you're trying to get leads, people. I don't know. Whatever. It's teach your own, but I'm going to leave mine at normal. This is where you're going to put your website title. I'd recommend you put like, the region you serve or the area you serve is what I'm going to recommend you put there. A lot of times people will put their cute little hashtags or their little like slogans or taglines. I wouldn't do that. Um, I'm going for search engine optimization. If somebody searches, you know, a region or my city, I want to be more likely to come up. 
Um, <clears throat> it's the same for the meta tag, have some kind of meta tag. I say find homes for sale in Kent, Ottawa, Barrie, and Nuevo counties at EXP Realty. Um, I'm going to add some more counties there. Too. Um, don't worry about this. Don't worry about this stuff. Um, you can have an additional address. So like if you have another business address, so you've got your broker's address and maybe you also want your home address or your office address. I've got a PO box address that's added on the footer of my website. Um, this is hide Zillow testimonials. I've never gotten their Zillow testimonial function to work on KB Core. I haven't tried it in a long time. I'm not going to just, I just say no. Um, this is where you choose your template. I have, there's only two templates you can choose from. I have the hero template. That's like the layout of the website. And then you can choose the color accent. So somebody like somebody liked hot pink the other day, someone liked violet and it looked cool. It looked pretty, but you might be more basic and just want like gray or blue. And that's fine. I have turquoise on that. Um, on those images, you know, I have my background videos. You might be somebody who would, I'm sorry, background images. You might want, instead of a background images, you might want to have a background video. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find her, but she younger EXP Realty Oregon. So I'm going to show you an example of what that can look like. It always takes a little bit of time to load. Oops. Oh, shoot, that's not her. Sorry. Hold, please. I'm going to see if I can. That was her website. Um, maybe it's this one. Oh, this is it. Okay, here it is. So, see, it takes a minute to load. And so, I don't like that. That's why I don't have it. I don't know if it's that way with all videos. But this this is what it is. And the one I tried when I first started using KB Core, it took like it seemed like it took a minute. But it's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, you could do that. And you'd put that ID there. And when I say ID, I mean the actual not the whole URL, just the ID is like the numbers part of the of the um, link. That's fine. Um, so this Sylvia, I have a question. Yes. Um, on the chatting box, did you create the chat or somebody else did? It's just my from Facebook Messenger. It's just my Facebook business page messenger. It's not a bot. It kind of acts a little like a bot. That's how the Facebook business page messenger works. Um, so you, so in, in my um, template, if you go to my template, I talk about editing your website settings. Um, creating the Facebook business page um, instruction, Facebook business page messenger bot, if you will, is in there. So I don't pay for it. It's just, it's directly from my Facebook business page. And so if anybody messages me there, it goes to my inbox for my um, business page. And it kind again, it kind of acts like a bot because someone will message something and it just says, are you looking for an agent or this or this? And then you, and you can kind of design it a little bit. I haven't done too much with it, but some people will spend a lot of time on that. You know, you can, you can decide what questions you wanted to ask and give automatic responses. Yeah, but what I don't understand is, can you go back and show me how you link that to the KB Core? It's in my template. I don't have time to, to show you that. Okay. If you go okay. to my template, all the directions and I have a video on how I did it and everything. Okay. Okay. So anyway, you're just going to go through here and choose this. I'll just tell you what I have. I don't use the full custom width. I don't have the black color header. I don't, I do have the primary color header. Um, the black color header just means it's like darker. It doesn't mean it's the black logo. Okay. Just means it's darker photos. Um, I don't use the square image of my agent um, face. I just use the circle. Um, so anyway, you just have to choose something because if something's blank, the site like doesn't know what to do. Okay. So um, in, again, in all my in my template, the training on more about this is in there. I do want to point to a couple other things though. You can choose on whether you want your 
pending or contingent. Um, I'm going to choose contingent. I want it all to show. If you can, you can choose what you want to show on your website and what you don't. I want everything to show personally. Um, my default sort, so in um, when people are doing searches on my website, you can, I have the most, everything's going to uh, pop up by popularity. So the most popular listings will come up first. You can have it like the reductions will, or the, the listings that I'm on the website, like the, the newest listings or, or the price is the highest or lowest. You can choose that. And then I have it as the grid is the default property view. A lot of the default that you get automatically will show map. I like the grid because when people search properties, they'll see a bunch of properties all at once. If they see the map, they'll just see this map and then they got to scroll down to see this list of properties. And I just want them to see like a big group of properties right at once. That's why I have the grid. All right. Somebody's chatting with me. Um, change the journal a little bit if you don't like it. Yes, exactly. Um, all right. What else do I want to tell you about? So many things. <clears throat> okay, we're done with that. That's your functionality. So now let's talk about campaigns. All right. Um, the must-have campaigns um, that I want you to have is one default buyer campaign, one default seller campaign. Don't have lots of default buyer and seller campaigns. Choose one because that's the, otherwise you're going to have tons of different campaigns running at the same time. Okay. You also the open house campaign, a sphere campaign. We're going to talk about custom campaigns and hashtags and triggers. So we'll, we'll do that now. Um, let me just make sure. Everybody's in. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So it's funny. I, I'm in mine. And, you know, I have everybody else's campaigns that I, when I do setups for people, um, theirs are all dialed in and looking pretty. Mine are a hot mess. So I said, let's do mine tonight so I can show mine and get mine cleaned up. <laughs> All right, so I'm like, you know, I say I'm like the hairdresser that has bad hair or the mechanic that doesn't have a running car. That's what it's like for me. Okay, so I'm going to go to Marketing Autopilot and start a campaign. And first, I just want to show you um, how this looks. So um, I've got a ton of campaigns here, um, but you have the same thing as me, and it'll say Key Core Library, and it should say system campaigns 23. Now I have run into people that for whatever reason, when they get their KB core website set up and they log in, excuse me, oh, um, they, they don't have all the system campaigns for some reason. So if that happens to you, or if there's anything that seems like it's broken in KB core, I want you to go down to the chat, which is the right hand side, click on new conversation, report a bug or product issue, click on KB Core, and then it's going to then allow you to write a message to them. Now, they've been really behind for several weeks now, and so I will tell you that if you, you put in your request or what your issue you're having problem with, try to be as detailed as possible. You can even attach, like use this little file thing to attach a screenshot. You know, because a lot of times they'll want to see a screenshot of what you're talking about. Um, so, like, let's say I only had 12 campaigns in here. I would take a screenshot of this area here and say, oh, I don't have all my system campaigns. I should have at least 23, but I only have 12. And I'd put that in here. And then what's going to happen is probably the next day or even two days later, you will get an email saying something. And if you don't get an email, then do it again because they have just been really behind is what's happening okay that's that so the campaigns that you are going to want to add so you're going to want to add from the kb core library to your own library you're going to want to add the following um the first one is open house you're just going to click here add to my library ta-da and then you're going to go back to this kb core library and you're 
add the conversion default seller campaign and the conversion default buyer campaign. Um, and you're also going to add the default prospect homeowner campaign. Click add to my library. And then one more. And that is the default homeowner sphere campaign. You're going to add that to your library. Those are the ones I suggest you add. Now I'm going to tell you again, in my template, in my campaign training, there's a 10 minute video where I show you exactly what to do. And I show you from like a blank slate, adding these campaigns, activating the campaigns. Activating the campaigns just means you move it from gray to blue and now they're active. And then I talk about what each campaign is, okay? And just the quick summary is your um, open house campaign. The open house campaign, um, it's, if you use the app, there's the open house app that you can download and you can um, enter in the listing information. You can do this for any listing, any property. Um, doesn't have to be your own. Put in the information and then um, on a mobile device, so it'd have to be on a phone or an iPad or tablet, it can't be on just a regular laptop, it has to be on a mobile type device. Um, people can enter in their, their email address and name and phone number and, and feedback for the property. Um, and it's kind of interesting, people are a lot more willing to do that when you, they walk in and say, hey, welcome, so, welcome to the open house, thank you so much for coming. Please submit your, um, please sign in because we're going to want your feedback for this listing. People are like, oh, okay, boop, 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 boop. Whereas if you ask them to write on paper, it's like weird. I don't know. Like they, they don't want to do it or they don't give you all the information. But if they're doing it digitally, they will. It's weird. So anyway, um, when, when they do that, <clears throat> the open house um, <coughs> campaign will automatically start because your KB Core Open House app is automatically linked to your KB Core website, and then these leads are going to be automatically on this campaign. So that's pretty cool. Um, the default buyer and seller campaign, that's going to work for any buyer who checks out a property and is not registered on your website. They're going to automatically get this campaign, the default buyer campaign. It's fine. It's a good, it's just let it happen. The seller campaign, any Buddy who does a home valuation on your website and KB Core decides they're a new lead and not a prospect for whatever reason, and I don't know what that's about, then they're gonna get the seller campaign. The other campaign I mentioned, the default homeowner prospect campaign, that is also a seller campaign, but it's for those leads that KB Core decides are called prospects instead of new leads. Again, in the video, in my training template, I explain this in detail. Um, and I also explain in detail how to do custom campaigns. But we're going to do a couple tonight so that you can see what the heck it is. All right? So let me do one. And I'm trying to think. Okay. So... It's kind of different because I already did this for myself, but it's a bad one, so I want to fix it. So in my template on the campaign training, I have a document that's linked that you will find, and I had to fix this up recently because I noticed some mistakes in it, but I fixed it up just like a couple days ago. Um, I'll put it in the um, chat right now. This... Um, link here takes you to my campaign training on YouTube, but this document has like all the copy and the instructions for my custom campaigns too. And I'm going to put this in there. Oh, that might not be the sharing one. Sorry. Yeah, share. So you're not going to be able to edit this, but you're going to be able to access it and look at everything that's on there. Okay. Putting that in the chat right now, but it's also in the template under the campaign training. Okay, so 
the first thing I tell you is to create these templates. So I'm going to create a couple of these templates right now. Um, and I think I might already have it in here, but we'll see. So I'm going to go here. We're in still marketing autopilot and templates. Um, so you're going to be able to create an email template, um, a text message template, uh, a task template. And so I'll just see if it's in here set up. No, it's not. So I'm going to create add template. Okay. And I'm going to create a task template. A task template is telling me the agent what to do. Okay. So I'm going to create a task template. Say, hey, Sylvia, set up this market report for this person. Okay. So that's a task template that we're going to put in a campaign. I also, I think it's in here, but I'm going to check. Yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to delete both of these because that is confusing. I'm going to have to redo my sphere campaign. It's fine. It's all good. I want to anyway. I've been wanting to do it. Um, I have this sphere intro email I'm going to go to. I'm going to copy this sphere intro email stuff. And I'm going to go add template. I'm going to paste it in here. Now, anytime you paste um, copy from a different program, so like your notes or Microsoft Word or Google Sheets or whatever, you copy text from another program, you're going to want to modify it in here and I'll show you what that looks like. But anyway, so what we're going to do is take Sphere Intro Email, that's the name of it, and paste it there. The subject line is this, checking in with you, paste it there. We're going to get rid of this part. So remember I said you want to modify it. So right now we pasted it from another program. So I'm going to select this copy. And how I select that, you guys, you can just select it with your mouse. But what I do is I do um, on, I have a Mac, I do Command A, so if you have a PC, it would be Control A, that's Select All. And then here at the top, got Paragraph, and it's got all these styles, so Heading Styles. I'm going to click Paragraph, and then you'll notice it kind of changed the, the look and the font a little bit. So what that does is it, it makes sure that when this email is being sent, because these emails are HTML-based emails. They're not text-based emails, they're HTML-based. And so when they're sent, you want them to look right. And so you want them to look the way KV Core likes them. So I'm using KV Core's paragraph style, okay? So I just wanted to mention that. Now, if I just started typing in here, it would automatically look the way it wants, but because I pasted copy from a different program, I had to do that. Now at the bottom, it has includes signature. Remember in your agent profile, you have a signature. That's what's going to be included in there. So it's already going to be attached to the email as your signature. And I'm going to click add template. All right. I think I also have, what's your number? I just want to make sure. Yep. I have this other template in here called what's your number? Do you have a real estate question? What's your best phone number? I'd like to help you with your real estate needs. That's another one that I have. Again, I have all this copy in here, and I'm gonna, I wanna quickly go over what some of this copy is. Um, so again, if you go here and you watch my campaign training, I'm telling you exactly what to do. But um, you're going to, you can take these email templates and copy them in and paste them in. So I've got, this one's my Facebook buyer intro email, and this one's my seller share intro email. And then I've got my sphere intro email that we just did. There's also next door seller intro email. You could change this around to be called like Google seller. So um, my question is, why do you think I have custom campaign copy in here? Like what would be the point? Like why wouldn't I just have for any seller any seller lead that came in, why would I want to specifically be, t you know, have it say, um, you know, in the subject line about the home valuation you requested on next door um, or about the property you viewed on Facebook? What would be the point of that? Does anybody have an answer for me?
Yes, I guess when you are doing that, you're trying to keep track of where are those buyers or sellers coming from and so you can have a better idea how you market yourself. Okay, so market yourself. So, so, so I mean, if the lead comes in, I can still know where they're coming from, but what would be the point? You kind of touched on it, but what would be the point of the custom campaign to reach out to them? Yeah, and so Linda said, so I don't look like a robot. Okay, good. And, and those camp, the campaigns that are in there, though, they're really short and sweet and kind of personable and conversation-like. So you're not going to look like a robot, but, but I have another reason. Um, and you guys are touching on it. Almost, just, uh, I feel like you would know how to spend more time, where to spend more time and more money and all that. Okay. That's good. That's good. But here's my answer. Here's my answer. Why custom campaigns? Um, in other words, let's say I post, let's say I post on Facebook um, a property, like either one of my listings or another agent's listing, and they get this email and it says in the subject line about the property you viewed on Facebook with a smiley face. And then it says, hi, you know, Sue. I noticed you viewed, and then it shows the last property they viewed posted on Facebook the other day. I'm a local real estate agent, and I'd like to answer any questions for you about the properties you viewed. Are you thinking about buying or selling a home soon? I'm here to help. Thanks. What this is doing is it's creating familiarity because the person's going to be like, oh, yeah, I clicked on that property yesterday on Facebook, and that's why this person's emailing me. And, oh, they have a smiley face. And so they're just, it's, it's creating familiarity in your marketing. Um, you know, so people are like, oh, that's how I got this. Uh, you know, it's, it's like you're bringing that degree of separation closer by saying this is how you know it. So here's another example. So that's my Facebook buyer campaign. All the Facebook buyer campaign is, it's really the conversion default buyer campaign, but it just has... Um, the Facebook buyer intro email <laughs> um, is the first thing. So let me show you what that looks like in real time, okay? So first of all, I wanna see if I already have this. Um, I do, but we'll make sure, and it says about the property viewed on Facebook. I wanna just, I'm just going to paste over it because I have made some changes to this copy since I did it. So I'm just fixing this up, okay paragraph. All right. And update template. All right. Now I'm going to go to my campaign library. And I already have this campaign in there, but I'm going to make it new from scratch just for you guys. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> Facebook buyer campaign. I have a couple of them. I'm going to delete this one. So I'm going to delete this campaign. So this is how you delete it. You just go remove. Yes. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create, we're going to modify a campaign. We're going to create a custom campaign, really. So um, how I'm going to do that for this one, I am going to go to my conversion default buyer campaign that is right here. Okay. And I am just going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to hit clone. Okay. Don't worry about all these triggers. You're not, yours isn't going to look like this. This is, I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you what those are in a bit. I'm going to hit next, 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 and clone. So I'm making a copy of it. So some, if I post a property on Facebook and a new lead comes in to look at that property, comes into my website and registers on my website, the way it's set up now is they're just going to get my regular default buyer campaign. And that is perfectly fine. It's a fine campaign. But I want to create another degree of familiarity by customizing and saying, hey, you clicked on the property on Facebook and that's why I'm emailing you and how can I help you? 
So it's, it's the only real difference in this campaign. So here's the copy. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change some stuff around in here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to delete this because that was um, okay. So I just deleted something that I had customized earlier. <laughs> so, so, okay. So the first thing that they're going to get that's in the conversion default buyer campaign is just, it's this text message and it just says, you know, forgot today. It forgot to ask the other day. Are you shopping or shopping? Or are you looking for something in particular? Um, that's the default campaign. The text message is fine. I get responses to it sometimes. Just, it'll say I'm, I'm just shopping or I'm looking for a house to live in. I mean, you know, I want to rent something. I'll get a variety of responses. So you decide if you like that or not, it's fine. I would just let it happen. Again, they're only going to get it if there's a phone number. And, and so I leave that, okay? But I add this action because I'm going to create this Facebook campaign. So I'm going to click email, add action, and I'm going to search for it in a Facebook buyer intro email. There it is. And um, I'm going to name it the same thing, Facebook buyer intro email. And I'm going to have this go on the first day. So the way this works is it's going to be the day after the lead comes in. I could send it immediately. I could run immediately. And that's a choice you can make. I, I'm choosing to do it the day after. There's no right uh, answer here. Okay. All right. Um, so they're going to get a text message and an email the day after. All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this other action. Now, remember I said that KB Core will create call tasks for you automatically, and that's great. But I just want to make sure that this comes up as a task for me um, to call them. And I might not have their phone number, so then what am I going to do, right? So, so I'm going to add a task. So I'm going to add this action, and it's going to be a call action. Now, it, it, I can set this up for the system to call me and then initiate um, the call when I answer, and it will connect me to them. But I'm not going to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm going to have it set up as a task. And I'm going to say call or send the what's your number email. So, and then the template I'm going to choose is to call and leave a voicemail, okay? Um, and I'm going to have this happen on day two. I actually added this particular thing. I added this to my default buyer campaign as well. So what happens is this task is going to come up for me. It's going to hey, say, hey, Sylvia, call this lead. Or if you don't have their phone number, send them the what's your number email, okay? And, and it, that, that email actually works. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm going to leave the rest of this just the way it is. It's fine. It's lovely. Hopefully someone will respond to it. They'll email back or they'll call me because whatever. I don't know. Um, or when I call them, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you've been emailing me. Who knows? But it's fine. It's 100 days. Now, besides this stuff, um, when a new buyer lead comes in, they're not only going to get these touches from you, they're also going to get search alerts. They're also going to be sent properties automatically because KB Core is going to automatically start sending them properties to look at based on the first property they viewed. And then as that person looks at more properties, KB Core will start adjusting to keep sending them similar properties like they're looking at. Okay, so that's automatically going to be happening on top of this campaign. And then hopefully you're going to also be calling them when it comes up on your call tasks or whatever. All right, um, so I'm going to add, this is my, convert, my, my Facebook um, campaign and I'm customizing it. And I'm going to add another thing. Uh, at the end of 100 days, I don't want that lead to just get old and be nothing. I want to start, I'm going to continue to do stuff with them. So I'm going to add the action here that the status is going to change from new lead to sphere. I'm going to put them in my sphere. So I'm changing the status to sphere. And this is going to happen automatically, but I'm going to put a note in here, change status to sphere. 
And I'm going to do this on day 101, which is the day after they get the last email. And again, it's going to happen automatically. The system is going to automatically change this for the contact. It's just going to come up as like a task or a notification for you that it happened. Okay? So that's something to note. Um, and then I'm done with that. I, I have done everything I want to do with that. Now I'm going to edit this part. Um, what I want this to do is when this campaign sees the hashtag Facebook buyer come in with the lead, when it sees that hashtag, that's when I want this campaign to start. Okay? So I'm going to keep everything the same. I'm going to change this to Facebook buyer campaign. All the instructions about how to do this is in this document I showed you, okay? Step by step. So in the, how I do this, I say first add all these templates in and now build these campaigns, okay? <laughs> all right. Um, so activates when Facebook buyer tag is present. And next, update. And now I'm going to activate the campaign. Now, the other important thing, and again, my campaign instructions. So here's all the templates. Here's all the templates that you're going to be adding. Okay, I even have an agent attraction campaign. So there's five emails you're going to send. So, okay, so after all this, I have this. This is my campaign instructions. So I say, okay, first you're going to add the following five default campaigns. And again, I have the video to go with this copy. So you can watch the video and then use the, this document to help you. So I tell you what to do, add these campaigns and then activate them. And then you're going to customize the sphere homeowner campaign first um, by going to that came campaign, opening it up, editing the campaign, doing all these things, okay? <laughs> okay, you just follow the steps, all right? And then I have how to create the Facebook buyer campaign, how to create the seller share campaign, how to create the next door campaign, you know, how to do all these things, how to create the agent attraction campaign. So I've got it all for you right there. Isn't that great? Okay, I know it works too because I just hired an assistant to help me do KB Core setups for people so I can do it faster because um, I take a long time sometimes. Um, so, so anyway, so she's doing, and she just follows those instructions and then I check her work. I'm like, yep, you did it. She's like, yep, I just followed your instructions. So it's pretty nice. I uh, know it worked, but anyway, okay. So, but what's important here that I need to tell you about custom campaigns is, and this is in my instructions, is this campaign is still designed for a buyer lead who comes in as, as a new lead um, and and so when this lead comes in the way it's set up now is they're still gonna get not only this campaign because the Facebook buyer hashtag is present but they're also gonna get the conversion buyer campaign the regular default campaign I don't want them to get both campaigns so I have to prevent that other campaign from running at the same time and so how you do that, and again, it's in my campaign training. How you do that is, sorry. I'm gonna show, this is, this is a, a example one, so I'm gonna show this to you really quick. Um, so pretend this is my, not an example, pretend this is the real one, okay? All right, All right. so what's gonna happen is you're gonna open up your default buyer campaign and you're gonna say, okay, I don't want this campaign to run at the same time that my Facebook buyer campaign runs. So, so I'm gonna say, okay, okay, default buyer campaign, I want you to go ahead and run when the status is a new lead for a buyer but I'm gonna add another trigger. And the trigger is gonna say, you can also run when the hashtag 
is not the Facebook buyer. So what I just did is I'm saying, okay, conversion default buyer campaign, you get to run. You are the boss. When for any, you're my default for any buyer's lead whose who, who status is new lead, you're the one who's going to run. You're the winner. Um, however, when Facebook buyer hashtag is removed or not there, then if, that, if you don't see the Facebook buyer hashtag, you go. But if you do, you don't get to run. <laughs> So that's how you can prevent your default seller or buyer campaigns from running at the same time as your custom campaigns. You're going to do it with the hashtag. So let me show you again what that's going to look like in real life. So I need to go to my real conversion buyer campaign. <laughs> and make sure it's in there. Yeah, okay. So this is my active one. And you'll notice this is my real one because the one I just showed you sort of for demo. Um, this one's my real one. Look at how many triggers I have in here. So these are all my custom campaigns that I have for buyers. Um, and so they're all, all these custom campaigns have hashtags showing, like the leads that come in will have these hashtags. And so what I'm saying is, hey, conversion default buyer campaign, you can run in all cases except when these hashtags are there. Then you're not allowed to run, okay? So that's what that looks like. All right, so let's pretend we are going to do this. So I'm going to go to um, listings. And I actually am just now all out of listings myself, which is not good. But I'm going to go here and clear filters, and I'm going to go to filter here. And I'm going to go to agency listings and apply filters. And I'm going to just look at all the EXP agents. Ooh, so this is, um, he's on my team, so I'm going to promote his, his stuff. He's in my revenue share group. This is Corby. And Hudsonville is Hoppin'. So I'm going to promote this, this listing. Um, I'm going to select this MLS ID, and I'm going to go now to Lead Engine. And I am going to go now under Lead Engine to IDX Squeeze page. And here is, and then this is a drop down. Now the reason there's a drop down is you might be in more than one MLS. And if you're in more than one MLS, what you can do is you can, through the marketplace here on EV Core, you can add an additional website. And what it's going to be is it's going to be for $12 a month, it's going to be an additional front-facing website for that other MLS where you, you, know, you have a you know, different headline title, like a different title, maybe it's a different region. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be connected to that other MLS, but the back end, your back end, your CRM and your lead engine, and all your campaigns are the same. You only have to manage that for one. Um, is your CRM, your campaigns, um, is going to be the same. Uh, but what you're going to do here for IDX is you're going to choose the domain you're working with. I only have one domain, one MLS I'm working with. So I only have that one and start building. And I've got my choices here, multi-property squeeze pages, that's your curated list. That's your list of open houses for a certain zip code, for example, that you can create. Or maybe you wanna create like a, a squeeze page for a certain price range in your county. Or maybe you wanna create um, a list of all the new listings that have pools in a specific neighborhood or whatever the case may be. Okay, we're gonna do a single property squeeze page. We are gonna post it on Facebook. That's the source that you're gonna choose. The hashtag I'm gonna put is Facebook buyer because the reason I'm using that hashtag is because I wanna activate the Facebook buyer campaign. Right, you with me? I'm gonna put the listing ID. Um, property views allowed before registration. I'm going to ask for immediate registration. 
So again, the source is Facebook. I'm going to add the hashtag Facebook buyer, meaning when this lead comes in, this tag of Facebook buyer is going to be connected to the lead. Okay, and they're going to be asked to log in immediately. And I'm going to generate the link. Okay, um, these two links um, are the same exact link. It's just that I only want to save the short link. And then if I go in here and see what it looks like, I'm going to go in a new URL and see what it looks like. Just make sure it works or whatever. You will notice that it automatically converts to the long link. And the long link is the squeeze page link that is telling you the story of the squeeze page. The story in this case is that this is my domain and this is the MLS ID and the source is Facebook. That's where I'm going to post it. And the hashtag that's going to be added is Facebook buyer and that the person's going to immediately be asked to log in immediately. Okay. So that's what it is. Now, um, I, when, when this page goes away and I go to else in KB Core, that's gone forever. Okay. I can't get back to that. If I go back, that, that's gone forever. So I want to save my links if I ever want to use them again. Because now that's gone. I can't get back to that. It's not saved anywhere inside the system. But one thing I want to do is I want to delete myself as a um, person because I want to show you how this works. And because I'm logged in, it, it, it knows me. So I'm going to go here to where I'm logged in. And I am going to, first of all, um, totally unsubscribe and the log out. Okay. And log out. Okay. So that's that. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to find myself. And I am going to delete myself as a person. All right. Hit refresh a few times. Okay. All right. So let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm going to put in the, the squeeze page in here. So let's say I post, I should, some of you are new. All right. Let's pretend I, I'm now I'm going to post this link on Facebook. Oh boy. Oh boy. What's happening? I'm going to go to Facebook and I'm going to post this on my business page. And I'm going to paste the link like so. not fetching a preview. Don't like that. Um, what's not happening right now is the link isn't showing, so I'm going to try again. Sometimes Facebook is a pain. Try this again. There, now it's fetching the preview. Why it didn't before, I don't know. All right, so there's, there it is. I'm going to say something wonderful about this. Um, check out this fantastic new listing in Hudsonville. Um, this is next level living. Here, let me know if you would like to schedule, schedule a private showing. Now in Michigan, 
I can promote any other brokerage's listing that I want to, um, any other person's listing I want to. The only thing is when you're doing it like this, you want to put in parentheses like, e like listing courtesy of eXp Realty. And so that's what I'm going to do, even though I am with eXp. And because he's on my team, I'm going to give him a shout out. Normally I wouldn't, but, but he's with me. So listing provided, um, listing courtesy, courtesy of Corby Orlings with eXp Realty. Now in the law in Michigan, I only have to say listing courtesy of eXp Realty or listing courtesy of Keller Williams North or listing courtesy of, you know, Remax United or whatever. But because he's on my team, I'm just saying, I'm saying his name just because I'd want him to say my name. Okay. And then, um, and now I'm just going to post it. Now you will notice KB, Facebook used to have it. So you could write from there. You could also have publishing options. You could save it as a draft. You could schedule it for later, but you can't do that from there anymore. Now, if you want to do that, you have to start here with publishing tools. So let's say you want to schedule your posts or you want to save a draft to deal with it later and fix it up later. Um, you actually have to go to here to um, scheduled posts and then create and then create a post from here and then you'll be able to schedule it from here. Why they did that, I don't know. It makes it more difficult. I like the way they had it before, but whatever, that's what they did. So. That's what you're going to be posting your links places, okay, <laughs> on a regular basis. So let's say I, that's me, and I looked at that link, and I'm like, wow, I want to check that out. Now, I'm already on Facebook. I'm going to continue with Facebook to log in. I'm going to say, no, I don't want to enter my cell phone number. Just let me in. Let's see what somebody's saying here. Do you have to get permission? Oh, I already said that. Um, so again, <clears throat> it's... In my state, I don't have to ask for explicit permission at all. A lot of old school realtors are like, well, you should. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> that's what I say. That's your opinion. The law says I can promote it if I want to. I'm just going to be uh, compliant, and I'm going to say who the listing is courtesy of, and I'm going to mention the brokerage. So there. You have to find out what your state laws are. I don't know what your state laws are. So anyway, I just checked out this listing. Isn't it great? Gosh, it's, it needs to be updated, man. I don't see. I don't like the dark stuff. That's just me. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of my commentary. All right. So I anyway. have a question, Sylvia, before yes. you go on. When sure. you went to, to the schedule button, if you want to schedule that Facebook ad, for tomorrow, let's say the same thing you just did. You have to let the Facebook know ahead of time that you scheduled that you you have to go back into that thing that you did. I'm not sure I, I'm explaining. So myself. when you schedule it there, you just put when you're gonna schedule it for and then it just automatically goes. As far as boosting, if you're talking about boosting it or advertising. No, no, no. advertising, let's say I wanna schedule all my advertising for the whole week. Yeah. Um, so I just have to go back into that schedule after I created the, I, I selected the. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to create your links that you want. Let's say you're going to create five different squeeze page links. You know, like one day you're going to have a reduced property list. Like here's a list of all the reduced properties. And one day, these are a list of all the open houses. Another day, here's my favorite listing of the day, you know, to promote a listing or Hey, get your instant home value. So you've got all these different squeeze pages. You're going to create yeah. them, and or you already have them saved somewhere. And then you're going to go to take one of those links, go to your Facebook business page, go to the publishing tools, and go to scheduled posts. And you're going to create each individual um, post for the week. And then just say when you want. I want this one to go Monday at 10 a.m. I want this one to go Tuesday at 2 p.m. I want this one to go Wednesday at 8 a.m and just set it and forget it. Okay. Okay. All right, so now um, my new lead came in as me, and some really interesting things have been happening lately with KV Core, um, and it's really weird. Um, and what's been happening is, um, 
it's taking a long time for whatever reason for KB Core to automatically assign the campaign. So it's not as cool now when I show you because it's going to take like 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but let me just show you what this looks like. So it also added adult 55. That's interesting because I was looking at that earlier, but okay. Um, anyway, so, so it added the hashtag Facebook buyer when the lead came in. Okay. And it showed that I looked here. Now the contact was assigned to me because I'm there. It, it didn't, um, it's not saying anything's happening right now because nothing's, because it's lagging. And I don't know why, why KB Core has been lagging with assigning campaigns, but it, it will show up. You'll notice it's been assigned to the lender brand in Reading because it's going to automatically do that for me for any new buyer with, with a lender. Um, so it did show, we'll come back to this so I can show you how it will automatically start the campaign, okay? So um, for whatever reason, it's been lagging. Don't know why, just has. All right, so let me go on here. Um, all right, it is 741. So I've already talked a little bit about creating lead generating links. Um, I talked about the single property squeeze page. Um, what I wanted to show you though is in my template, um, in my template, if you go to the lead generating training tab, I've got all these different videos of how to create multi-property squeeze pages and different ideas for them. How to create single property squeeze pages, which I just showed you how. Seller squeeze pages, market reports, call capture codes. And also, um, I don't really have any list um, videos on landing pages and manual listings. I'm not gonna talk about landing pages because I hate them. But I, I will quickly show you about manual listings. So this is if you want to do like a coming soon listing, or even if you wanted to help a FISBO and you're like, hey, I'm going to help promote your listing. Okay, this is an idea. I'm going to help you promote your listing. All right, how does that sound? Well, that sounds great. Fantastic. Um, well, um, you're going to go here to um, listings and you're gonna go to manual, manual, and then you click on add listing, and then you just have to type in the address, and it has to be, I think it has to be a valid address. And then, you know, you're gonna fill in all the information, put, you can put the neighborhood. Um, I'll just go ahead and do this for you. Oops. It might not have to be a valid address because I did this actually with commercial agents the other day and I think you can actually do whatever you want. Um, so, 49507 um, uh, area, that's interesting. Um, we'll just do Kent County. I'll call it Southeast Grand Rapids. neighborhood Oakdale next and then you can choose what what is coming soon exclusive sold I mean you could call this I wish they had more types but you could call this exclusive like if it's for a FISBO let's say just call it exclusive single family property style it is a duplex that's where I live um, I don't remember when it's built I'm just gonna make stuff up um, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, two half baths, total rooms, let's call it 14 is a duplex, two stories, I don't know, let's call it um, 1400, I don't know, I'm totally making stuff up here. Um, oops, and there's, oh, there's all these kinds of options too. Ooh, fun. You can, you can even do this for somebody who's doing a rental um, anyway, you could, oh, you can put a virtual tour link in there, the school, you can just fill this whole baby. I'm not going to spend the time doing this, but, um, you can choose all these options too. I'm going to say next. You can put a picture in here. I'm just going to put, um, this picture. Oh no, I'll put this picture. Next. 
Um, you put the price, um, 200000 Listing date today. Remove, oh, you can choose what day you want it to be removed from the site. That's fun. Um, if you want to link it to a list MLS ID or not, listing status is active. You want to make it active so you can, you can say, you know, the cool description right here of, of whatever you want to say and then add the manual listing. And then from here, now what's, you can't create a squeeze page out of that. This is the one problem because there's no MLS ID for you to do that, but it will create this link. And because on your site you have like your, you have like the normal, um, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, the normal lead generate, um, um, you're gonna mandate the normal lead generating because if you have it on normal, so people will keep, people click on this, you will generate the lead. Okay, so you're gonna, it's gonna have all this information in here. So I think this is a cool thing to do for Fizbo's actually. I just kind of came up with that idea. Um, but anyway, but anyway, so then this is a link that you could save and share. I, and again, it will generate links. You just can't create a squeeze page. So you can't like add a specific hashtag, you know, that kind of thing, but whatever. Okay, that's fun. I like that. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna delete this because that was, um, I don't know, how do I update it? Can I delete it? I don't know. Oh, I know. Um, all manual listings, but do, that's kind of fun. Do you guys like that? I like that. I, I can think of all kinds of options to do things to do with that. So when I was talking to commercial agents, we were talking about how they can use this. Um, with commercial agents, however, it's got like all the residential data. So I'm trying to get KB Core to create some sort of commercial property data that would be better. So it's not bedrooms and bathrooms, but other stuff. Okay. Um, it is 7.46. I want to talk next about implementing lead gen strategies. But before I do that, before I do that, um, I think what's more important is talking about using this as a CRM. Okay, that's what I want to do right now. So using KB Core as a CRM, adding your contacts and lenders and stuff. So the first thing I want to say is to add a lender. If your lender, you can't, your lender's not already in there with another agent because they might be. You could search, find out. Is you're just going to email not KB Core support, but you're going to email EXP Realty, um, our broker. So you're going to email support at exprealty.com, and you're going to say, please add this lender for me. And you're gonna say, this is the lender's name, this is the company they work with, this is their email address, and this is their phone number. And then what's gonna happen is EXP is gonna set them up their own little KB Core profile. They're not gonna get a whole KB Core website, but they're gonna get like a, a dashboard for a CRM dashboard. And um, that's what they're gonna get. And then you can either, you can either make that person your primary, so every time you get a buyer lead, they'll automatically get the lead too. Or you could just not add a primary and then just whenever you wanted to assign any lender that you had in there, uh, you know, um, somebody you could. So for example, I'm gonna go to my smart CRM and let's pretend, so here, here's the lead, okay? Let's pretend you wanted to assign a lender. So you go, what's, what I hate about KB Core, I hate a lot of things, but I love a lot of things too. But one thing I hate is how tiny everything is here on the left-hand side. It's like, it's so tiny. So I'm gonna go here to more details and it says lender here. So let's say I want to add a different lender. So I'm gonna add a different lender, Amanda. Lehman, and I'm gonna save. Uh, she's in there twice and I've complained about that, but whatever, she's still there. Um, so. So I just assigned a new lender. So it just said context lender reassigned from brand the running to Amanda Lehman. Fantastic. All right, so, um, so that's something you can do. The other thing I like to do, like, so let's pretend this, per oh, oh, here we are. Oh, guys, remember we're saying it's taking a long time for the campaigns to show up? Notice Facebook buyer campaign is now in there. It's active and the campaign's been assigned. And again, I don't know why it's a lag, but so we did this lead. The lead came in, um, Facebook hashtag was automatically there. So it assigned the Facebook buyer campaign 
And notice the conversion default buyer campaign is not also running at the same time because we told it it wasn't allowed to, okay? Um, so that's how that works. So I'm glad, I'm glad I remembered to show you that. Um, and then you can see now that the campaign's assigned, you can see what's going to happen. You can see the upcoming touches. Like, okay, they're going to get the text. Um, okay, then they're going to get this email. And if there's something you don't want to happen, you can just delete it from happening in the future. All right. Um, you can't edit the campaign or modify it now. Okay, it's already in here, but um, you can delete things. Now, let's say you don't have, maybe um, you're that task, this task um, of call and leave a voicemail um, is there. So I don't have the number. So I'm going to click send email. Oops. And I'm going to start typing into the template. What's your number? Oh, what's your phone number? And I say, hi, first name. You know, do you have a real estate question? I want, I want to help you. Send me your number. So I'm going to send that. So now I just sent that email. Okay. Um, and let's say, though, that this person's actually in my sphere. Okay. If I can't, I'm not going to have time to talk all about it tonight. But let's pretend this person is in my sphere and um, I have, I'm going to do this. In the training that I pointed you to, the, um, in my template, I have that campaign training. Um, in that campaign training, you'll be able to find everything about sphere. But I have a couple campaigns um, that I talk a lot about here and it's this full playlist so i've got this playlist this is in addition this is in addition to the campaign training that's in my template but i've got this whole playlist i'm going to put it in the chat this is on my youtube channel and i just want to point you to a couple of them one is how to create, modify, and activate a sphere campaign. Your business idea needs. Um, so, oops. So, I forgot. I, <laughs> I have to the do website. this. Stuff. I've monetized my channel, which is great. I for know me, what you're thinking. Another Wix. Okay. So, campaign. And so, I've got this whole. I mean, I talk for a whole 44 minutes all about the sphere campaign. In my template training, it's like I only talk about it for like five or 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so if you want to know more about that, and then I also have a seller share campaign. Um, and I talk for almost a I'm whole happy. hour about my seller share campaign. And I love my seller share campaign. It's my favorite campaign. It's very good at converting um, and developing relationships. So I'm just pointing you in that direction. But again, all the... This is, these, these campaigns are included in my template. It's just the, the first campaign training that's in the template is the shorter version. And then at the bottom of the template on the campaign tab, I have the link to all the, these campaigns. I just have a lot of trainings that, that I'm trying to point you in the right direction for. But anyway, let's pretend this person is in my sphere and I've just added them. Um, you be quiet. Um, I can from here, I don't know if I have it. I'm gonna, let's pretend I, they're from here. And the way I've got it set up is, hopefully this will work because I don't know, is when I add the campaign sphere homeowner or add the hashtag sphere homeowner, it did work. When I add the hashtag sphere homeowner based on my instructions and all my trainings, um, it's automatically gonna start the sphere campaign for homeowners. So I've got a, I've modified this campaign. I've customized it to be a certain way. Um, so the, there is a default sphere campaign, but I didn't like it. So I customized it a little bit. Um, so it's not a lot of work to do. And so, so anyway, now this person's on my sphere campaign. And one of the things that you're going to do when they're on your sphere campaign is you're going to set up their market reports. <clears throat> now here, I can just click here and add a market report for um, for somebody in my sphere, um, I can just set it up. Like I can set up a market report for Grand Rapids or for a zip code, you know, so for a city, a zip code, a county. Um, but instead, 
since they're in my sphere and I know their address, or maybe I just called them up and said, hey, um, I'm gonna, I just wanna update my records. How are you doing? Everything going good? Is this still your email address? Oh, good. Is this still your, your um, home address? Do you still live here? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna double check with that. You're gonna see how they're doing. But then, um, you know, and I would recommend that actually for your sphere. Like if, and before you start them on any campaign that's gonna start, I would give them a call and say, hey, how are you doing? Is this, you know, is there, do you need anything? Uh, you know, you're still alive. Okay, everything good. Is this still your email address? Is this still your address? And then what you're gonna do is you can put their primary address right here, but, and that's great. But what's important though is the valuation. You want them to get their home valuation once a month, right? So you're gonna click add property and type in their address. Sorry about my cat. <laughs> it's very affectionate right now. Okay, so there it is. And now I just added, you'll see valuation, it's there. And then watch what happens if I go to the top. It says market report has been added. Look right there, it's green. And it says zip code 49507. So it's gonna send um, a market report for the zip code and it's gonna send the valuation for the home, so what the home is worth every 30 days. So that's something I'm gonna do for my sphere. So in my sphere campaigns, only like 18 touches over three years, it's a three year campaign, but every month they're also gonna get their home valuation and, and, and market report. And what I like to do is I like to add search alerts for my sphere. So what I do is, for my sphere, I say, I want all the single family and condos, for example, and your area might be different. Maybe you also have villas or townhouses. In my area, it's single family and condos mostly. Um, and I'm gonna just, for, their, for this person's zip code, 49507, for their zip code, once a month, just monthly, once a month, they're gonna get listings. They're gonna have, see all the listings in their zip code, all the new listings, once a month they're gonna get this. So they're gonna get their valuation um, of their home and all the new listings once a month. So that's what, that's what they're gonna get from me. Now maybe I'm also gonna send an email newsletter once in a while, or um, maybe, um, you know, whatever. Maybe I'm gonna send them handwritten note cards too, whatever, that, that kind of stuff, those kind of sphere check-in things you can do that's in the campaign because you'll get tasks to say, hey, do something for this person. <laughs> so that means you're gonna give them a call, you're gonna send them a text, you're gonna mail something in the mail for them, whatever. But that's how I like to work with my sphere. When you wanna add a contact, you can add a, in, a contact individually right here. Um, and I, I, you can start them on the sphere campaign as you're putting in there, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend you do it the way I suggested in my training video, and that is by using the hashtag sphere homeowner so that you can control when that person is going to start getting the campaign, and they'll have the hashtag in there. So when you go in your CRM and search for a certain hashtag, because let's say you want to find all the people that have the hashtag sphere homeowner, because that will tell you who's on that campaign. That's why I do it that way. But anyway, you're going to add them like this. The other thing you can do is if you have a whole ton of people to add, you can go here to lead engine and you can go to bulk import. And from here in bulk import, you can submit a file for KV Court to upload your stuff, your, your leads, or you can do it yourself. And what you're gonna do is there's a template here. And this is kind of important because I just did this the other day. I have Red X um, for circle prospecting and I downloaded like 200 leads that I wanna call this week um, for circle prospecting. And so um, I basically, what I did is downloaded those leads from Red X and then I looked at this template and I just use, oops, and I just use, this is the template that it wants 
for your, you know, so you, this is the template headings it wants. So you have to kind of look at your file and decide what's the closest stuff that you have to it, you know, and, and, and name it, kind of put the column headings the way you would, uh, the way it wants you to for your file. And then you're going to take your, take, you know, let's say it's an Excel file. You're going to export that then as a CSV file and then upload it here and then it will work. So let me show you how I did it with my Red X um, people. I, I took my Red X file. I lined it up in the template according to how KB Core wanted it. And now I'm going to show you that those people are called um, Ottawa Hills. So there's all my Ottawa Hills. So I gave them the hashtag of Ottawa Hills and Red X because that's something you can do in that file is you can assign the hashtags in, in, that, in the file you create and, um, and then they're just automatically there. And so that brings me to this fun thing. Somebody asked about a dialer. So what I can do is you can download the KB Core app. The KB Core app is an app that um, you can download and log into, and you can do all kinds of stuff. You can manage your listings. You can create squeeze pages <laughs> from this. Um, but here's what it looks like. I'm going to play this little video. You can check your inbox um, your notifications. It also has a dialer. Um, so you click on the bottom, it has a little dialer uh, phone, it looks like a phone. And from the dialer, you can um, look at a, a lead who you have to call next. Um, you can also, from the dialer, you can dial a hashtag. So tomorrow, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to dial a hashtag. I'm going to choose Ottawa Hills as my hashtag. And it's just going to start giving me um, everybody that I call. Now, anybody you call from your phone using the dialer app you can also manage search alerts but um, oh here here it is so i can dial a hashtag see that i can dial a hashtag so anybody you call from your phone it is going to call from your cell phone not the smart number if you use the dialer from the computer from your desktop it is going to come from the smart number so if you want it to come from your cell phone number use the actual phone so this is what it looks like it's really cool i love it um, and it helps me so much actually keep track of my calls. And then you can see at the end of the day, you can look at your dialing sum summary and I'll show you, you know, how many calls you made, how many people you contacted, because it'll say, um, you know, how, you know, did you leave a message? Do you want to schedule another call? You can add a note in there as you're going right on your phone. And it'll show you, you know, how many bad numbers did you have? Um, how, how many messages did you leave? It's pretty nice. I like it quite a bit and I highly recommend it. Re recommend it. The, the KB Court app, you can also, like I said, manage your listings. It's a dialer. You can create custom lists. You can create squeeze pages all from your phone. And it's linked to, um, it's linked to the KB Core Open House app, which um, is here. So, so that's that. Isn't that fun? Okay, um, what else did I want to do here? Somebody's chatting with me. All right, if they're currently in your sphere, would you recommend removing MLS subscription emails being sent? In addition? Oh, um, yeah, like if they're in my sphere um, and they're also getting MLS listings, I mean, no, yeah. How I do it, and this is how it has evolved, it's totally up to you, but um, I love sending the search alerts from KB Core. The reason I love it is because as soon as they click on something, I get a text message that people are looking, and then, and then I can go in and um, see all the stuff they're looking at. It's really easy for them to message me right from a listing. Um, and it just kind of keeps it all in one place. So the only time now that I have people getting listings from the MLS is if they're like serious buyers that I'm working with at a high level, like we're looking at homes like every couple days and I'm taking them out on buyer tours. Those are the people that are getting the MLS listings now. That's how I'm doing it. Totally up to you. And that did evolve. That evolved over time. I mean, I don't expect 
you know, it, it took me a while to get to really be using KB Core at the level I'm using it. Even when I was teaching it, you know, two years ago, <laughs> I wasn't using it at the level I am now. I, I, I mean, I and mean, there's still more things I got to do with KB Core that I haven't even done yet. So whatever. Um, what other questions do you have? Um, it is 8.04, but I'm going to kind of keep going a little bit to finish up some things. Um, this, this, I do want to talk about, you know, I have like some ideas. Um, and again, in my template, in my lead generating training section of my template, I have a 30 minute video that talks about lead generating strategies. And I talk about this idea of squeeze pages like just being consistent you know posting something just once a day really isn't a lot it's probably not enough you probably want to post on facebook you know four or five times a day uh, i'm not kidding um you know you want to post on instagram a couple times a day and what's kind of nice if you if you take a picture of something like uh, one of your listings or maybe you go to an open house and you take a picture of an open house that you're at um, or you take a picture of a new business um, on Instagram and share it you can share it to your business page at the same time simultaneously so that's something you want to do so so the idea is I, I give you an idea of like if you wanted to you know post a squeeze page every day here's an idea if you um, want to do more with your marketing, consider doing a weekly email. I am doing a weekly email now, and I really love it. Love it for keeping up with my sphere. Um, yes, you can schedule mass emails from your marketing autopilot and KB Core, and you can use the advanced editor and make really pretty um, emails. I have this video about how to use the advanced editor in KB Core. I'm going to put it in the chat. So you can make really super so, pretty looking videos, uh, pretty, pretty looking emails um, that you can build them. Now you can create like a really pretty newsletter template, um, let's say in your KB Core. And then um, just kind of going here so I can show you. And um, you and you can, um, here's what it looks like. So I'm building, I'm showing in this video how to build it like with buttons and links and pictures and, and video and everything else. Um, so you can create a so template like here, this. Now. And then it, as you do it again, you, you, would, you could just take the same template. So it would take a long time initially to build it. But then, you know, later on, if you're gonna do another newsletter, you can just put new links and new content still follow the same everything else and it's not going to take you like a third of the time so anyway I have that video how you can do that and send the mass emails so you can create um, really pretty things like that um, I talk about in you know um, doing live videos you know so doing Facebook live videos is so easy and then you take that video and then you can download that video and upload it to YouTube. You can upload it to Nextdoor. You can upload it um, to your uh, weekly emails. <laughs> um, and you can put squeeze page links in video descriptions, like on your live videos on Facebook, then you can add the squeeze page link. Um, like, so let's say you're gonna do an open house. You're, you're like, hey, here's an open house. You can then have the link to the listing uh, squeeze page in in the with the video or maybe you have a link of all the open houses in the area as a multi-property squeeze page you could write a blog post about like um, uh, I don't know like how how there's maybe a low inventory you know and you have not a lot of inventory not a ton of um, listings are, are going up but there are a good handful of listings that have been on the market a little bit and they just reduce the price. So you could like have like a little blog post about that. And yes, you can blog to KB Core, create a blog post, and then create a squeeze page of all the reduced properties in a certain zip code. Um, you know, in, in your social media posts. Um, and 
so that's so that's that. Okay. Um, what else did I want to talk about? I would um, recommend like once a quarter, like schedule this once a quarter to audit all of your social media marketing accounts. Like just double check and make sure you know all the most updated information is in there. If you changed your number, if you you know updated your branding and now you have a, a, a branded website, um, whatever the case may be, just go through. And update and make sure like you're you're posting like I realized like I'm not posting to Google my business near enough and that is such a high leverage channel to be using and I'm not doing it enough so I did an audit and I cleaned everything up and I'm like okay I'm gonna make sure I schedule this to to do my marketing a lot better because um, I do like having an online presence um, so that's that the last thing I was gonna talk about is um, the Craigslist poster. Uh, a lot of us don't use this because a lot of us think that Craigslist really isn't a thing anymore, but really it is. I mean, because you can be found online. Um, so what I wanted to make sure you all know is in KB Core platform here, if you go to your learning portal and you, under learning portal, then go to get help, and then you go to KB Core. This is a lovely resource. <laughs> I see so many questions on a workplace and I'm like, man, if they would just do this, it, they, they would know how to do it. So let's pretend you're like, well, I really like the idea of downloading the KB Core app. How do I do that? Well, let's type it in KB Core app. Oh, there it is KB Core mobile app. All right, so here's an article. It tells you everything, how to do, what it is, what it has on it, um, how to use it. It's like basic guide. Here's the menu items. All right, look at pictures, everything. <laughs> All right, so um, there's also an even more basic one. Um, Oh, there's an open house app. Everything you need to know about the open house app. Um, oh, here's CRM features in and in the app. So using the app and how to use the CRM features in the app. How to use the dialer in the app. How to use the millions mapped app. You know, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> So I just wanted to point out, like, if, and, and it's really easy to understand articles. I would say the only one that sucks and is actually wrong is anything about campaigns. Anything about campaigns is terrible, but everything else is good. All right, so the Craigslist poster. So you, what you have to do, so if you read this article, it tells you exactly what to do. You know, if you don't, it's a Chrome extension, so if you're not using Google Chrome for your, you should, because KB Core likes it much better anyway, and so does everything EXP likes Chrome better. Um, so use Chrome, and then and then you click here, you know, adding the extension, and I just, you know, it's super easy. You click here, add the extension, and then um, it says you're going to see this message pop up to add it, and you're going to say yes, add it, and then it's going to come up and say KB Core has been added to Chrome. Great. And then you're going to set your Craigslist URL. So it's going to say, okay, you, you click that icon because the arrow says to do that. And then you're click set URL. And it's going to say, okay, now click on all the purple circles until you reach the Craigslist area that you want to be in. So you're going to click, keep clicking the circles that are closest to you till you're in the one you want. And then once you're in the one you want, you're going to click on the name. <laughs> okay, so it just tells you exactly what's going to happen. And then it says how to post. So let's do one. Okay, so let's do one. I'm going to go here. I'm going to post that same listing that we, that I did earlier. And I'm going to, it says Craigslist, never. So I'm going to click it's never been posted. Nobody's ever posted it to Craigslist is what that says. Okay. 
And um, so here in this drop down, um, I can go here to post to Craigslist. And it's automatically, it's automatically doing things because I have that cool extension. So, oh, look, it's all, everything's automatic. So nice. Okay. Ta-da. So now what I can do, though, it's unpublished. I can make sure it's how I want it. And um, I am going to edit this because there's some things I don't like. Okay. Um, so this is fine. This headline's okay. It only has one picture and that's okay. It talks about an open house and that's great. Um, but notice here, it says for our app and more details, text Sylvia D to this smart number, okay? And then it's got automatically brought to you by Sylvia Dana EXP Realty in Grand Rapids. That's fine. Um, it, you know, it, that's fine. It's not my listing though. And I kind of feel like it pretends it's my listing, so I kind of don't like that. Um, and um, the other thing that I don't like is that it doesn't have the address, and that bothers me. It, when somebody's posting this, um, I want them to have the address. I don't want people to think that I'm just promoting their listing um, without providing the address. I feel like it's, I don't know, it just bothers me. So I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to go to edit post. And um, there is an open house date. And he said it's 321. So I am going to put that in there, 321. And uh, he said noon. Um, oh, I guess that's it. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. Um, and it says unlicensed. I can put my license in here because I want to. You know, I just want to be as like put as be as legit as possible. I don't remember what my license. Do you guys know what your license number is by heart? I don't. All right, and then location info, cross street. Um, let's see. I'm gonna put the location in here of the address. Um, is that right? And I do Hudsonville. Okay, so there, show the address. There it is, and continue. The other thing that's kind of weird about this is sometimes the map isn't correct. Um, I'm going. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. It's fine. Um, but you can you can edit it so it's exact if you want to. And then from here, um, I'm going to edit where it says for our app more details. So, so I don't want it to say this is so I'm going to do a call capture code and I actually have a video about this exact thing so but I'm going to go ahead and do this are you ready so I'm going to take this MLS ID here and I'm going to go to and we're almost done you guys I'm going to go to lead engine and what was it's 4456 is the address so I'm going to go to call capture here so the thing about LinkedIn, uh, Craigslist is that you can't put links in there. Um, so you can't put clickable links. You can put copy and paste links, like copy and paste this URL. You could do that. But, um, but it, otherwise it doesn't have links. So I'm going to go here and I am going to add um, a custom text code if it lets me. So I'm going to add new. And... I'm going to do 4456. So I'm going to say 4456 because that is the, um, that's the, the address. And I'm just going to put the MLS ID in there. I don't have to put a reply message or link. I'm just going to put the MLS ID. And I am going to, uh, I'm not going to worry about a hashtag. 
that's my smart number. Again, it's a shared smart number, and I'm going to say add. Okay, it's in there. So that's a custom text code to me. Nobody else who has that shared smart number also has that. So now, um, instead of four, our, I'm going to say for more details about this listing, text. Four, four, five, six. And I'm going to get rid of all this um, to this number. Okay. Um, here. Okay. I'm going to leave the rest. That's fine. Okay, and I'm going to hit continue. All right, and then I'm just going to look at this and make sure it looks better. Okay, so for more details about this listing, text that. And uh, it's got my license in there. It says there's an open house. It has the address. That's much better. Now I don't feel so shady. Okay, and then I'm going to publish it. All right, and now I have to, um, it's going to ask me to, um, to confirm this posting by going into my email address. Uh, so I will, I will do that. It'll be sent to my email and it'll, it'll ask to confirm. So that's it. So there, I'm done. I talked enough. Does anybody have any questions? You can unmute yourself if you want to. I hope you all learned something. Yes. Actually, um, on the campaigns, I'm trying to do one for expires. Uh -huh. uh, is there anything in there? I don't think there's an expired campaign in here um, in the marketing autopilot. Okay. Um, so I would just, honestly, I would just do a, the Sphere homeowner campaign for expireds. If you don't have a campaign, or you could you could do the Sphere homeowner campaign for expireds, or you could you could just you know you could you could actually use the Sphere homeowner campaign and come up with some of your own messages, like for the beginning some of your own emails for the beginning, like, you know, noticed your listing okay. is no longer on the market, you know, and add some custom ones to that and just take that sphere homeowner campaign and, and modify it for an expired campaign. Um, that's what I would do. I don't think there's expired in there, but there could be. Let's look. Any other questions? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. The other concern I have, I'm always, I'm always debating how to do this because, uh, on my KB Core, I have uh, only Spanish speaking people that don't have any clue about the English language. Yes. And I also have bilingual people in there. So, how do I, I don't know, do I have to design one in Spanish just for that? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Hang on one second. So, so, yes, there is a default seller prospect expired campaign in here. Okay. All right. You just add that and you know modify it how you want to. Um, so so basically, <coughs> what you're asking is, <coughs> you have these Spanish. So what's? I don't think there's any Spanish um <coughs> campaigns in here. No, but I'm so I would um. So I was thinking maybe creating my own campaign just in Spanish and put on the library. I think that yeah, would be there. You could, what you could do to make it simpler for yourself is don't overthink it too much and um, take like the default buyer and default seller campaigns <coughs> and just kind of, you know, read what they say and then like put it in Spanish, <laughs> like to, you know, something, keep it super simple and short. Yeah, yeah, but my question is, how does KB Core know? It's not going to know. You're going to have, it's not going to know. You're going to have to make it know. So you're going to, first of all, you're going to go to email, you know, go to templates, and then you're going to just type it in, you know, maybe create it in some different program. So it has like, um, you know, the same, like the fonts and like the, the like the, what do you call them? You know, the NYAs and the, yeah. you know, upside down exclamation points. <laughs> Do it in whatever, and then paste it in here, and then um, and then name it something like Spanish, you know, buyer one email, Spanish buyer two email, whatever. Okay. And then 
and then create, you know, a Spanish buyer campaign and a Spanish seller campaign. And then you're just going to have to, you're going to have to know uh, somehow. I don't know how. The only other thing I can say is if you're, if you're promoting a certain campaign on like Spanish channels, like in a Spanish Facebook groups or whatever, you could have a hashtag like I did Facebook buyer. You could have the hashtag Spanish buyer and make that trigger that Spanish campaign. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm saying? So if I'm targeting a Spanish group on yep. Facebook, so what you want me to do is create a campaign and then link that campaign into that specific Facebook so what you're going to do, so do you remember when I created the Facebook buyer campaign here? Yes. And we created the Facebook buyer campaign. And what we did is to remind you. So what we did is we, so you could take the same idea and then just put instead of, and, just, and then just have your Spanish, um, you know, create, you can just create Spanish text messages. You could create, you know, and just the same, these same messages, but just translate it into Spanish yeah. and then put them all the same actions here and then create, create it. So it would move to hashtag Spanish buyer would be the hashtag you create. Okay. And then when you go to your lead engine and you create like, um, you find a listing that you want to promote, let's say, and maybe a Spanish speaking neighborhood or, or a listing of open houses or whatever, <clears throat> you know, here's all the open houses, here's all the reduced properties, you know, in the zip code or whatever. And then you create the hash, we create the squeeze. So let's do that. Let's pretend we're doing that. <clears throat> so let's say I want to do in Kent County. Oops. In Kent County, I want to do all the single family and condos that reduce properties. And I'm going to post this on my face in a Facebook somewhere. And I'm going to give it the hashtag Spanish buyer because I have a campaign that will trigger when Spanish buyer tag is seen. Okay. And I'm going to say that, that since this is a list of reduced properties, I'm going to allow that these people look, they're not going to be asked to register till they look at a second property. You know, and then they're going to, okay, so then I'm going to save that, that link. Now, what's going to happen when this, um, when somebody clicks on that link and they look at properties, you know, you'll see up here that it's going to be, say, the source is Facebook. So that's where it's going to show you the source came from. It's going to add the hashtag Spanish buyer. And because you created a campaign called Spanish Buyer that's active, now Spanish Buyer campaign is going to trigger. Yeah, but my question is, how does the computer know that they are Spanish? You're not, just... No, you're, it's not going to know. It's not going to know. So the only, the only thing... <laughs> the la by the last name, maybe? I don't know. I mean, the, one other idea, it's not going to know. So the only other idea I have for you is if you create, you said you created landing pages before. Yes. So you could create a landing page in Spanish that says, um, you know, so you want to do one for lead, in lead generation and you're going to put Spanish buyer is the hashtag. Um, get list. I don't know. In Spanish, you're going to write get list. Okay. okay. And then like, and then have that open house list there. Okay. okay. The reduced properties, the reduced uh -huh. property. List. Yes. Okay. And then um, let's say you want to require the phone number two. Okay. And then you're going to say in, you know, um, all the information in there has to be in Spanish. I get that part. Yeah. Get your, get your Spanish. Um, uh, buyer list or whatever. I don't know. And you're say all those Spanish things here. Okay. And then, and then what's going to happen is, um, is then you're going to create this, this link. You're going to say this. Okay. Okay. 
And then what's going to happen is when people enter this in and that lead comes in, that hashtag Spanish buyer will appear. And then they're going to start getting that Spanish buyer campaign. Okay. I'm going to try I mean, that. Because the ones that I've so been doing, they're all been in English and I have not been getting uh, a lot of success with those. I mean, well, the other thing you can do though is when you create the squeeze that Spanish buyers squeeze page like I had, you could um you could post, you could write the post in Spanish and say, "Hey, you know, and and then say, you know, you know, you're going to start getting these properties and you know, and if it's in Spanish, obviously somebody who speaks Spanish is going to click on it and they're going to get this the follow-up campaign in Spanish. I mean, yeah, and when I'm doing that and I'm putting that squeeze page link into my Facebook, mm -hmm. so only the people, it, only if I'm doing a pay campaign, that will work, right? I don't know. You're going to have to test it. I don't know. Because so I, I will have to pay a campaign with Facebook. I mean, you, don't, you, so don't the only have, you don't have to pay. A can you don't have to do boost a campaign. You don't have to pay for ads. You can okay, I see. Why, are you, so that will only be going on organic? Yeah, just be posting it. And we go organic, only onto my Facebook friends. Well, and then you're going to or on, on, face, on your Facebook business page and maybe in different Facebook groups that are Spanish speaking groups. I don't know. Okay. And then when I go into marketplace right here, mm -hmm. how can I pay campaign in there? I wouldn't. No, no, I would. If you're going to pay for business, Facebook ads, I would do it directly from your Facebook business page. Okay. Okay. Got it. Who else has a question? I heard somebody else speak up. Julia. Yes. I need to send um, an email that, to my 2,000 people in my CRM to try to weed some out. Okay. So it won't be part of a campaign. How do I just quickly do that? So you could, uh, two ways. Um, you can go to Marketing Autopilot here and schedule an email. And then... Um, you know, you would want to have whatever you want the email to say, you'd want to have that already created in the templates. So you'd want to have that done. Um, so once you have your template, then you're going to schedule a campaign and you can schedule, uh, you can send a, um, all the contacts that match a certain criteria from a certain filter or all the contacts that have a certain hashtag or all the contacts that have a certain status. So let's say you wanna send it to everybody, you know, prospect. Now, one thing about this is it only lets you do up to three um, types. So you might have to send two or three different, schedule two or three different emails, but, but you, you know, up to three different statuses. <clears throat> and then you can choose when you want it to send it. So let's say I want it tomorrow, oops, tomorrow at, um, a.m. Okay. And then you're going to choose your template. So um, I'm going to say, what's your phone number? I don't know. I'm just going to say I already had that template in there. Okay. Um, and then I want to include my agent's signature and then I can schedule it. Okay. And now it's okay. there. So and I'm, I don't, I'm not sending it to hashtag people. I'm sending it to everybody. Okay. So again, I don't have, yeah, I didn't do it that way either. As you know, as I said, in the context with a certain status. So if you want to send it to I everybody, see. I ah. show my sphere, my prospects ah. and new leads, but I can only do three. So I'm going to schedule one ah. with them and then I'm going to schedule another one to take care of the rest. Active leads, clients, contract, and okay. I can three. So then I schedule, and then so then if I wanted, to, you know, so I schedule three different emails to cover all those statuses. And that what way. if they don't have a status? They will. They're going to have a status. Okay. okay. Yeah, me in there without By the a way, status. Your screen looks. I. It has no resolution on my screen. I can't see what you're doing. And so, thank you. What do you it's mean? It's very fuzzy. It's very fuzzy. Okay, I'm going to zoom in some more. Well, that's okay. We're done now. <laughs> okay. 
You don't see it though? It's, uh, I can't read the text, even with my glasses on. It's just very well, fuzzy. This is a I'm sorry about that. This is schedule mass email here. And then over okay. here, schedule email. All and right. Here, this says send to contacts with status. And then I click in there and then Got I have the options. Okay. Okay. Got All it. Right. I hope that helped. Thank you. Yes, it helped. Thank okay. you. Does anybody else have any other questions? Was that good? All right, I, I hope that helped. Um, my training template has so much information and, um, and I'm gonna just, again, and also if you go to my YouTube channel, um, Think Future Real Estate, it used to be called Forward Thinking Real Estate, but I changed it. If you go here and you wanna look up anything, you can click on the search and you can just search something. So like if you search email, for example, you know, here's a bunch of, um, stuff that how to use the advanced email editor how to blog and send email newsletters you know anything to do with email is going to be listed here so as, as an example okay um thank you debbie so i want to put the my my channel here and oops there all right you guys have a good night Thank you. Thank you.